Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. This is a bit of a different video today. I'm going to do a get ready with me. I'm not talking about the makeup at all. Well, maybe the odd wee bit. But um, I created this really glowy kind of soft glam look whilst I answered your questions. It gets a little bit juicy at periods and it also just maybe gives you a bit of an insight to where I'm at in life these days. It's been a long time since I've done a QA, and a like literally years. So I feel like the last one that I'd done was kind of like me in my mid-twenties, which I actually privated the other day because it was embarrassing. But I have got a few Q&As on my channel, but this is probably the most up-to-date one that's given you an insight to me as a woman in her thirties, so hopefully a lot wiser. Thank you for watching as always, and um, if you haven't subscribed already, please do. It makes a big difference to my channel because, as I've said to you before, only 60% of my viewers... No, 60% of my viewers are not subscribed, so please subscribe. Um, I'll link everything I use below, and I hope you enjoy the video. Thanks for watching. So I got a response from you guys on Instagram. That's the only place I posted it. I didn't bother posting it anywhere else. But I got a response from you guys on Instagram, and I said be juicy. I, to be honest, they're kind of juicy, so let's get uh, dived in. So let's see what the first one that I'm going to respond to is. So uh, this was actually a very popular question and the first question is if I wasn't a makeup artist what would I be? And um, actually I watched, I've not done a QA and a in such a long time and there's not many public ones that I've left on my channel. So the first um, question has actually been asked to me in most q and that I've done. and. Uh, I, I was laughing at some of the answers that I'd given in older videos and I had said things like a cake baker or decorator which is still very true. I love cake. I mean that's probably why I got so fat last year but I do love cake. I like baking. I think I do different types of baking now. Obviously I'm, I'm really into the low carb thing and um, I I do like doing it. I'm not the best at it, but I do enjoy it. So that would be fun to have followed something in like food. Because uh, I do like cooking now as well. I mean, I, I, I always dabbled in cooking, but now in my 30s I cook a lot more than I ever did. Um, and then also I really love fashion. And I really love content creation. So although my job is predominantly a makeup artist, I do create more content more than ever. So something like that. I mean, I think if if God forbid tomorrow my uh, my job was no longer available to me, I um think I would look for something in like digital content creation. I enjoy content creation, you know, like I really enjoy it. This looks crazy by the way. This is uh, that flawless filter. Is it flawless filter? Yeah, flawless filter. But um, I'm kind of just using it to match my tan on my face. And look how much it blends out. Like this stuff is crazy. I just, I'm starting to really like it. Um, I really like the effect that it gives, especially when my skin's good. I got another one to asking me how I deal with negativity online and I think to be honest I don't receive that much, I mean touch wood, but I don't receive that much negativity. I get the odd troll that comes <laughs> and seems to have like a, a kind of trolling spree for a wee while. I think I've got a feeling it's the same person if I'm honest um, and they usually like to tell me that I, I don't know what I'm talking about or I don't... Um, I don't know anything about makeup um, and, and sometimes, don't get me wrong, if you have somebody that is persistent with what they tell you, like I'm, I'm sure I, I don't have to explain what a troll is and what they're about and what makes them tick because I think at this point in 2021 when trolling is such a big thing um, and we know about it a wee bit more now, it tends to be somebody that is unhappy within themselves. So, I mean, I don't think at any point I've ever felt the need to bash somebody um, under a false screen name or... 
purposely go out of my way to be negative towards somebody online. I mean, I just, I don't have the time for anything like that, but I don't understand people that do do it. I think it's very much somebody who is unhappy with themselves. But any negativity I receive, I either delete it or I try and give as professional an answer and as kind an answer as possible because I think to myself, well, it's taken, one, it's taken a long time for me to get to that place. If I received a troll back in my early 20s, I would have fought back. Hand and nail, I would have fought back. Uh, tooth and nail, I would have fought back. But um, now I'd like to think that I've done a lot of self-growth in the past year, even. Um, I would like to think that I've analysed the parts of my personality and my reactions about when I don't like someone else's actions and I, I feel like I've really tried to analyse that in the past year uh, and I've tried to grow on it. I do I see a, a level of maturity in me that I've never had before this year um, which in the past wouldn't have been the case. I do try my hardest to look at the bigger picture. Let's face it, I am an 80s and Scottish. Uh, I'm naturally fiery. I have a temper. I have a quick wit. I do tend to have like knee-jerk reactions to things and if that is your natural reaction it's hard to untrain years of that. Plus from somebody who was bullied very heavily as a teenager um, I found that as an adult I took a self-defense mechanism into my my adult years uh, which was to always try and look and act like I was like harder don't mess with me like that sort of vibe and actually I wish I wish that as a result of what I went through as a teenager that I didn't have that mentality and actually what I find now is that I spend a lot of time trying to not have that mentality Rising above it definitely is the best way to overcome negativity in life. This is a juicy one. Who's your least favourite influencer? Um, to be honest with you, my my favourite influencers are probably people that you wouldn't expect. For example, my favourite influencer is Zoella. I am such a big Zoe Sug fan. I always have been. I live for Vlogmas when she does it. I feel like I've kind of grown up with Zoe and watching her, um, which I don't think anybody would really expect simply because I'm a makeup artist. Her content isn't um, makeup-y, it's, it's beauty, but it's not like her showing artistry skill or anything. Um, I just like her. I think she comes across so well. I know a lot of people have an opinion on her, but I just really like her. Um, but what I don't like is when it becomes exhausting to keep up with certain people. I've never liked some of the bigger influencers that tend to surround themselves with drama. I just have never been into that. That isn't the type of content that I like to watch and actually I do find it quite exhausting to keep up with the latest scandal. So my least favourite influencer or influencers tend to be the bigger ones. However, I absolutely adore Jaclyn Hill. I've always really loved Jaclyn Hill. I think she takes such a pounding online for no reason. I think her makeup is great. I buy a lot of her releases. And um, I think she just gets so much hate for her body and the way she looks now. That is such a shame. So I think just people that are real tend to, to catch me. I really like women in particular that I relate to. I like like strong women. And I think in a world where it's quite hard to be a woman these days and, and, and I think in a world where women have almost had to grapple with their identity is um, it's nice to, to follow people who inspire you to be a better woman. This is a good one. Do you enjoy being back in Scotland and do or do you miss London? London is a funny old place. If you don't know, I lived in London. Um, well, well, I moved to London in 2014 um, and I worked down there um, for a good few years and 
at the time I was really excited to move it was a massive opportunity I was a very hometown girl had never really been out with Scotland or even just hadn't even really been out with the small town that I'm from um, because I'm not from Glasgow I'm from a small town outside of Glasgow and I had never really done anything big my Instagram following had started to grow I was <clears throat> kind of at the I mean I was kind of at the height of my popularity at the time and everything was kind of just falling into place um my then partner lived there already so when the opportunity came up came up for me to go it just felt like great but what wasn't great is that we hadn't been together for a long time when we decided to do this move to essentially another country together we also had very different ideas about how to spend our time together our free time together down there and we had very different working schedules because I was working in retail and when you work in retail in London the hours down there are quite extensive in comparison to maybe smaller towns and certainly they were very different to Glasgow like some nights were like midnight before you would get home and then you'd be starting work again the next day really really early and it just was um, quite grueling especially because at any given opportunity I would travel back to Scotland to see my friends at the weekend and not to mention it costs a bloody fortune now it's it's honestly like um, insane how much money it costs to live in London and I actually kind of regret the amount of money that I would have wasted down there but at the same time there's elements of London that I absolutely love obviously I'm still there all the time I work in London a lot and actually for the first time this year I'll be heading back down to London next week to work uh, and actually what was funny about me living in London is when I made the decision to move back home when I came back home I actually was still spending a lot of time there so I didn't really get the opportunity to miss it and now I feel like I've fallen in love with London so much more than I ever got the opportunity to when I actually lived there. Now I feel like I know the city a lot better. When I lived there I had the same old little kind of routine that I did. Um, didn't really have much time to enjoy it. Um, as I said the, the person I was down there with had a very different idea of what their leisure time should be. I wanted to like see London and experience London. I loved, loved, loved like the weekends and not in hell having a coffee even just like in the bars and things and a lot of the times I would venture out and just kind of go exploring on my own but um I think it really was a I didn't really have many close friends down there and actually one thing I would say about London in particular is there's a real strange mentality amongst the people in London and sometimes a lot of the times when you're in a working environment with people everybody's just trying to get ahead people go to London to make their careers better and I honestly can put my hand on heart and say I don't think I would be where I am today unless I had done that little stint in London but um, what I would say is that when people are trying to like move up the career ladder they're so quick to throw anybody under the well not everybody but they're so quick to throw other people under the bus to get their leg up so a lot of the time like I would think that I was like really good friends with someone and then like a few months down the line it would turn out they maybe hadn't said very nice things about me or they had purposefully tried to get me into trouble for something like I think the point of this is is that you have to be very careful of the true friends that you choose and pick in London. I honestly think now um, I have a lot of really close friends in London now and I honestly think now it would be such a different experience for me if I was to go back and actually recently we, we did kind of toy with the idea for a wee while about would we obviously I have a, a different partner now but we kind of had a, a little think for a minute or two um, would we move to London um, and actually the, the more I thought about it the more I had to kind of decide that 
I, I, I wasn't ready to go back to London and also would I ever go back to London? I think if the job was right and obviously the money was right because as I said it's an absolute fortune and I just I'm at a point in my life where I don't want to scrimp and save. I do want to enjoy life and not worry like where my money's coming from and is it going to cover all the bills that month you know like I, I do want to have security um, and, and, and live comfortably but there's just something always quite special about London that will hold your heart and, and you have your little London traditions and actually Stephen and I before Covid hit would be going down to London every single February because we always had like a nice little weekend away we would either stay like one year we stayed in the Ritz and or we, we did want to go back down and stay in the Savoy this year but it's just obviously not worked out that way. Oh actually we have booked London for Christmas, we just got a little apartment um, and booked like a Christmas but again fingers crossed that that still happens. So would I do love London, do not get me wrong, would I consider going back down and living there? Not just yet and, and I think if my job was to really kind of advance, maybe. But for now, I'm happy in Scotland. And honestly, if if you know me, I am such a home bird. Like I, I like my home comforts. I like what I know. So I think um, Scotland for me right now is is where it's at. I like like this little kind of eyebrow routine I've got going on, where I just don't really do much other than put a little bit of colour in them. And the, the lamination that I've been doing just makes that look like my brow, but better. And the bits that are a little bit too sparse, like here. Oh. How long have you and your boyfriend been together and how was date night the other night? Well, thank you so much for asking. We've been together for four years. He's very, very private. He doesn't like to be in the vlogs, as you guys have seen. He's been in, like, one, which I don't even think he knows that he's in. But he's been in one. Um, he's a very private person. He's not on social media. So don't go looking for him. <laughs> and, um... Yeah, we we um, have been together for four years, which is the longest relationship I've ever been in. And it's also the calmest and best fitting relationship that I've ever been in. I am under, I, I'm under no f illusion that I am quite a difficult person to live with, get along with, simply because I have a lot of expectations. I have a lot of... What's, I'm quite hard to what's the hard to please maybe let's say but also I don't really like anything out of my routine like I find it quite hard to gel with um, other people out with my circle I don't really have a big family so I don't really understand family time if that makes sense I just like doing my own thing and also I am a bit of a partier. I mean, I do like seeing my friends. I do go quite wild when I have a, a drink. Um, I'm loud when I have a drink. I'm actually, the, the version of me that has uh, a drink versus the version of me sober are two very different people. And I do feel like my mood can be very kind of up and down, which is challenging for people. And I, I, I honestly have to tell you, it's my way or the highway, like I am not up for compromise, which is terrible. Again, another thing that I'm working on as I get older, I do feel, but he is the only person I've ever met before that totally understands that. And I think he knows my boundaries and I think he totally knows when I'm not comfortable with something or if I don't want to do something and he totally respects it and I've never had that before. Like I'm sure you guys can totally relate if you have somebody forcing you to do something you don't want to. Um, it's not nice and it makes you feel anxious and it, it, that is what it comes down to. I used to always say I'm not a person with anxiety but as I start to get older I realise I do get quite anxious about certain things including 
what I can't stand is people showing up at my house without being invited. I cannot stand it. Uh, simply because it throws me out of my routine and I start to get annoyed and panicked and if my house isn't a certain way, I don't know if it's a form of OCD or something, I'm not sure, but what I would say is, is I'm very, very particular and I really, really hate situations that make me feel uneasy or awkward. Uh, I don't know why, it's just this weird thing that I have and he is the only person I've ever been with that fully respects and understands it and doesn't force me to do anything I don't want to do. Also, our dinner was fantastic. We went to Hanami in Finiston, which was a Japanese restaurant in Glasgow. Um, I'll link it down below. It was so, so good. Like, the best sushi I have ever had. Uh, let me see this. You've done so well for yourself that... Oh, you've done so well for yourself. Also, what would you tell your younger self starting out? I mean, I kind of touched on it a wee first of all thank you for saying that I've done well for myself because sometimes I don't feel like I have I suppose it's so easy to bash yourself and it's it's nice to see what people think of you in the eyes of a stranger sort of thing but um I would tell my younger self to stop being so angry at everybody um I, d I don't think I was an angry teenager. I think I was a very angry person in my early 20s. I had done some really stupid stuff in my early 20s, which I think we all have. But sometimes my behaviour in my early 20s, I really do think stemmed from being such an unhappy teenager at times. I always felt like I had a point to prove. I always felt like I had to be the best at everything I'd done because of just, I honestly think there's such a lot of dynamics in my life that have affected the way I became and the way I've acted. I was horrible at times in my early 20s. I was horrible to other people. I was horrible to myself. I put so much pressure on myself to be the best and I think that if, I, if anyone's ever been successful at something when it's challenged or when someone else is better than you you take it really personally and I think if everybody's always constantly telling you how amazing that you are at something you can be affected by it and, and, and it can kind of go to your head a wee bit and I certainly had elements of that in my early 20s. I wasn't very nice to a lot of other people. Um, I would challenge people quite a lot. I would certainly um, make myself to be the big I am as such. And I really do feel like if I could meet myself in my early 20s, I would be like, oh my God, get over yourself dial it down a notch because people are starting to think that you are not a very nice person and I do think it stems again I go back to the fact that I didn't have a very good um, teenage years and I do think that because in my teenage years I was constantly given a hard time for the way that I looked it made me again become very defensive in my early 20s it was a kind of I would really um, overcompensate and, and, and it would almost be like, well, if I put on this tough exterior and someone's mean to me or challenges me in any way, including through what I do, I need to let them know that I'm Queen Bee and that's it. And now I am Queen Bee because I've came away from what I was in high school and now I think I'm the shit, which is not nice, <laughs> really not nice. But at the same time, I think a lot of people maybe have elements of that. Would you ever do a video of you watching back your old YouTube videos? Oh, I don't know. Someone asked me the other day, I think it actually might have been Alan, but someone asked me the other day if I would ever recreate my first video. So maybe I might do that. They're just so cringe. They are just so, so cringe. Like, I really do cringe when I watch them back and um, again some of them like I've had to put on private because of the way that I'm acting in them and I'm just not that person anymore and some of them also I'm like what the hell 
where are my teeth? They were like so, so discoloured. Like, I just think, like, when I watch back my videos, I'm like, I had no filler, obviously, so my teeth were really, really prominent. Uh, because my lips were so small and obviously I've spoken videos before saying that oh I, I've I've had filler to combat the fact that when I was younger my teeth were very big and very protruding and my, my lips are to hide my teeth but it wasn't even necessarily just that it was also the colour of them now I haven't ever had my teeth professionally whitened but all I ever started using was the Cress whitening strips which I absolutely swear by I totally love them but I obviously had never used them before in, in some of my old videos. I just noticed how kind of different shades. Some of them, my teeth looked like a grey kind of shade. And I don't know if it was maybe because of the makeup I was wearing was fairer or whatever. But some of them, I'm like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> Let's get a wee wang on here. Do you find the industry catty and if so, what has your most catty experience been with another makeup artist? Wow, that's a bit juicy that one. Um, yeah, I mean, there's always going to be elements of cattiness to an industry that's dominated by women. Um, it's just in our DNA at times, isn't it? Um, but again, it just I think the worst experiences I've ever had have always stemmed back to people who either rival me. Cattiness in the industry is always going to be, um, I think, just relating back to people trying to do good and excel themselves in the industry that is makeup. And I just, what's my cattiest experience? I just think it's when people see me as a rival or somebody to be in competition with. I think that's probably been my cattiest experiences I've ever had. As I said, when I first moved to London, I had quite a lot of um, experiences with people that I thought were kind of my friends and turned out not to be. Or with people that, that don't give you respect when you really are due respect at the level you're at. But for me, I'm in a situation where I'm kind of old school in that sense that if I'm if I have less experience than another makeup artist I'm working with then I totally give them the respect they deserve like for example if I'm there to shadow somebody or if I'm there to assist because even though I've been a makeup artist for 15 years I still assist bigger makeup artists at times if we hire somebody in to do a shoot with us and I am the lesser experienced makeup artist with lesser service or ha have been allocated to work with someone who has a higher profile client list or then I give them the respect that they're due because they earned that client list, they earned the fact that they are in a, a fantastic experienced position. Like you have to um you have to really respect these people and, and, and give them their dues. If someone is further along their line in their career than you then give them the respect that they deserve. But I know a lot of people don't see things that way. It's kind of like the old mentality of respect your elders. I always kind of do respect somebody that is longer standing and more experienced than I am. I like working with other makeup artists. I've always um, liked being collaborative. I work well on my own and I also work well with others. This sounds like a job interview now, doesn't it? But... um. I just, I think that a lot of the times cattiness that I've ever experienced stemmed from either somebody that wanted to rival me or somebody that wanted, think, or somebody that didn't think I was good. You get that all the time. People, There's people out there that don't think that you deserve to have what you have or 
don't think that you've worked as hard as they have and have a bit of a chip on their shoulder about it but um I, I knew how hard I had worked to be where I was I knew the kind of blood sweat and tears that went into what I, I had achieved and if anyone ever did try to make me feel like I wasn't good enough or didn't deserve to be where I was I just had to remember that that was just one person's opinion and, and versus how hard I knew I had worked and as I said I think if somebody has um, had a lot more experience than you have in a certain area they, they deserve the respect. If you could create your own makeup range what would it include? Also if you could have an eyeshadow palette what shades would you choose? Love your work. Thank you so much. Um, if I could create a makeup range I would definitely have an eyeshadow palette that's for sure. Um, it would need to be neutral. I love browns. Browns are my thing but it would have to be the perfect nude palette and I've always always been on the hunt for the perfect nude palette. Um, there's there's palettes that come very close but for me personally it would need to have uh, the perfect shade of coca-cola brown. I talk about it all the time. There's only very certain eyeshadows that I think meet that criteria of this coca-cola slash chocolate brown that I'm looking for and have been looking for for a long time and it tends to be that if there is that colour that I really like it's always like not got the other colours that I want to complement it in the palette. Um, I like a jet black in a palette. I think a jet black in a neutral palette is a must. I think a mix of mattes and shimmers is always a must. I don't like just a matte, I don't like just a shimmer palette. Um, I also like a difference in texture um, to my shimmers. I like like sparkle sequin shades, I like just like really buttery velvety shades. So it would need to be neutral and it would need to be like that one that I've kind of been on the hunt for myself for so long. My hair looks crazy. <laughs> um, yeah. The next one is what advice do you give somebody looking to start out as a makeup artist? To be honest, I feel like my advice is kind of redundant now because at the time my advice would have been like work for a makeup brand on a counter and get the experience and skin tones and skin textures and types that way and, and build your portfolio but all of those kind of old school pieces of advice are kind of out the window these days it's all about social media and I think that I totally was lucky in a sense that I started my social media journey at the time that I did <clears throat> because now it's so much harder to be seen now it's all about declining numbers rather than raising numbers And actually the old school pieces of advice like go to college, start a portfolio, work with photographers, some of it's still relevant but a lot of it's quite redundant now. I think working with photographers is a great thing and it depends on what type of makeup you want to go into. Do you want to go into film? Do you want to get into salon work? Do you want to just take clients at the weekend or do you want to be a social media person? That is really the biggest question. Are you looking to be an influencer or are you looking to be a makeup artist? Because they're two very different things, believe it or not. Well, I think we should set this makeup down. Now that we've spilled some tea. And um, I think what I'm going to do, go down now is sort out this hair because this grunchy life ain't happening tonight. But uh, I'll join you back here when we have the hair sorted. So I just straightened my hair and then put like little twists at the front and pinned it back. But this is the final soft glam look. So I hope you found this juicy. Um, it's been a while since I've done a Q&A and um, yeah, I hope uh, you liked the makeup look as well. I'll list all the products below. It's very glowy, but obviously we didn't use any foundation, just the flawless filter. So I'll list it all below and thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys on the next one. Bye.